prepping for practice today, I just want to let you know we're going to do a restorative pose kind of for Shavasana or towards the end of practice. Oh, this is too high. Let's use my technical stuff. <laughs> so you're going to want to have, grab like a pillow from your bed. It's going to be awesome. Uh, if you really easily can open your knees in butterfly pose when you're laying down, that's fine. If you have like two really thick books you want to grab or two small pillows from your couch, or if you have two blocks, you'll use all of that towards the ends. Just have it handy somewhere around there. Um, I always recommend sitting up on something for the beginning of practice just to let your hips be more relaxed. We're working on a heart opening practice today. And I like to approach heart opening practices, or you may think of like back bending practices, but really as, as heart opening as an expansive, like full chest region opening sort of space. Like you, you can just like do this constantly and then you end up pinching and causing tension in other places. So I always like to think of heart opening as a full expansion in that region, just as a more physiologically balancing kind of place. Um, I've been, I've been reading, just like keep opening and reading through the Pema Chodron book, When Things Fall Apart. And so it's just like on the bottom edge of my coffee table and my friends were over the other day and they're like, are you okay? <laughs> like having this book out all the time? And I was like, no, actually I've been really great. Like, I feel like a lot of things. A lot of my perception of things has really been falling apart and changing very much, but I feel very open to it and I feel a lot of the benefit of a lot of those changes. I'm watching the way that those lines of that Mary Oliver poem was really stuck out to me. It's the poem about the geese and it ends where she says, I tell you this to break your heart, not that it may shatter, but that it may never close again to the rest of the world. I just think that that's so sweet. Like we can have these moments where our ideas and our expectations are completely torn down and we have the capacity, even as we grieve and we suffer with it, to see that there's opportunity then for new growth in the midst of the things that have been torn down. So we'll be opening and expanding this region in a way of preparing for that. We're going to start with face brushing. Take your index finger and your thumb together. Brush from the center of your forehead outwards towards your temples a few times. And then from the sides of your nose up to your temples on your cheekbones. From your temples down to your chin on your jawline. From the sides of your nose down to your chin along your lap lines. Moving your fingertips underneath and behind your ears. Feel for the soft spot that's back there and the bony spot up above it and then lift up from that bony spot so you get this really nice lift into your spine that hopefully alleviates some of the tension that comes up and as you lift the chin up too much. Take another inhale. As you exhale, keep the length, drop your hands down into your lap. Take a few full belly breaths. A diaphragmatic breath, the diaphragm being the bottom of your rib cage, the bottom of that heart space, really moving it as best you can. You can get like a little silly with it. More than you would be able to keep up for very long. Next time you take a deep breath in, take it through your nose. And exhale through your mouth. And again like that. And letting loose three ohms. Deep breath in. Oh.
to open your eyes. We're going to come into child's pose as our first shape. So if you've been sitting on anything, go ahead and start off to your side. We'll use that stuff later. And bringing your toes towards each other and your hips back. And it's fine if it's here, but just rest those hips back as much as you can. And then wiggle them out a little bit side to side. Rest your forehead down. And when you start to feel ready for stillness, move into stillness. Take one more deep breath and filling up the back of your heart space. Exhale, soften. And then you're going to lift yourself up. Now you can stay hips above your knees and work into a more classic thread the needle, or slide one arm underneath the other shoulder and rest your hips back. And then settle here. Opening up the back of the shoulder with a little different weight bearing alignment that we might usually have. Still rest your head. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. One side to lift yourself up. Unwind that arm. And then take the other one back, threading the needle in child's pose or hips above knees on the other side. So let those hips drift back towards your heels. Big breath in. Soften something as you breathe out. Start to lift your head up. Unwind your arm and then take it back in the table pose. Take a few cat and count. Inhale, drop the belly, look up. Exhale, round the spine, tuck your tail. Take two more on your own. Big deep breaths. And come towards a more neutral spine. You're going to take your right foot up outside of your right hand. Wiggle it forward if you can. And then come up onto fingertips. See if you can pick your heart up and broaden your collarbones. Relax your right hip back. One more big breath in. Exhale. Then you're going to turn your right knee and toe out. Take the left hand further forward and the heart reaches up and back towards your right hand. It's up to you if you'd like to stay here or summon the back foot up. Keep lifting the heart up and out, allowing it to expand. Big breath in. Big breath out. Gently release the back foot if you had it grabbed. You're going to take your hands back, your right knee back, and then your left foot forward. See if you can wiggle it a little bit further forward. Come up on the fingertips and or up onto blocks if you do not have super long orangutan arms, as I noticed I do. You're going to rest your left hip back and then let your heart lift up and forward. Keep the breath moving. Try to lift the backs of your ears out of your shoulders. One more big breath in. Exhale. And then turning your left knee and toe out to the side. The right hand comes forward. The hips come forward. The heart reaches up and back towards the left hand. Summoning the right foot is completely optional. If your hips are going forward, you should still be able to get a really lovely stretch to the front of your right thigh. Keep broadening those collarbones, lifting the ears up and out of your shoulders. One more big breath in, big breath out, and then release the twist. Take the hands back, the hips back, the left leg back, and then walk your hands a hand print forward. Turn your heart a little bit further forward so it's right up above your thumbs and not back behind your thumbs. You want to create a long line here. And then broaden your collarbones. Try to keep them open lower all the way down onto your belly. And then wiggle your legs back. Reach your arms back. Hold hands if that works for you. Then we're going to rise the heart up as you rise the toes up. And then also reach the ears out of your shoulders. 
for a long spine in Shalabhasana. Big breath in. Exhale, soften. Hands under your shoulders or just behind your shoulders. Lift your belly and your hips. Push yourself up. And then you're going to come down to a seat. Swing your legs out in front of you. You might have to scooch around a little bit. Now you can lay on your back to do reclined pigeon, but we're going to offer seated pigeon here. Take your right ankle up onto your left knee, and then you might scoot your hips a little bit closer towards your left foot. You can be on fingertips. If you know your wrists are feeling tender, give them a break by coming back here, yeah? Take your elbows back, reach your heart up towards your right shin. Take two more deep breaths. Soften something as you exhale. And then release the right leg. Give yourself a little more space. Tuck the left heel up on top. And as close as you can towards the right heel. Lift your heart up towards your shins and elbows. Go back, heart is open. Breath comes back to you if you may have lost it. Two more deep breaths. Exhale, release the leg down. Now take your right leg out long in front of you. Your left hand is going to stay back. We're going to turn your hands. The palm faces more behind you. You're going to stand up on your left foot. Lift your hips up in the air. Adjust my foot there a little bit. Yeah, get a little bit wider. And then lift your heart and your hips up towards the ceiling. So we're coming in a wild thing. Take another breath in. And then let your hips rest down. Just going to do that on each side. If you want your hand to face back behind you, you're going to press down into this foot. Lift your hips and your heart up. You can be on the toe tips. Big breath in. And then exhale. Take the hips back down. I will let you know that it is a significantly better alignment to come into it when you flip yourself over into a wild thing, which is going to be our practice today. For now, take your hands. Go ahead and give yourself some interwoven finger wrist figure eights and then try to go the other way just because it's weird and it's humbling. It's kind of fun. Shake water off your fingers. And then roll yourself over. You might be differently on your mat. I'll just keep here because I know which way I need to face in a moment. And you're going to take your heart over and above your thumb. Broaden your collarbones. Exhale, lower all the way down to your belly. Wiggle the legs back, reach the arms behind you. Inhale, Shalabhasana, lifting your heart up and forward. Exhale. Drop it down, hands just behind your shoulders, lift your hips, lift your belly, lift your chest, and then back to downward facing dog. Push from your heart down to your hands, wide spread fingers, maybe wiggle around a little bit in your hips and your heels if that helps you to find some space. One more big breath in. Big breath out. Keep pushing strong into both arms. You're going to take your right leg up and then bend into your knee and open up your hip. And you want to be reaching your pelvis up off of both ribs so your upper body is as stable as possible, which won't be totally balanced. But then go ahead and look forward. You're going to take your right foot forward to your right hand, lower your left knee if you like, and then you're going to take your hands back into your imaginary back pockets of your high-waisted jeans. Now that elbows back in your heart goes up. Okay, breath in. Soften something as you exhale. And then take your hands down, step your right foot back, come into plank pose. You can lower to your knees if you like to come all the way down to your belly. And then cobra pose with your chest just as far open as when your hands were grabbed behind you. Exhale, lower down. You can leave the knees down or lift your hips and knees and push yourself back to plank pose. And then back to downward facing dog. And I'm going to keep getting a little bit more frisky and intense with that as I go. And you decide at which point you have had enough frisky intenseness. And you go back to a variation that works better on your bum. Your next exhale, take your left leg up. You're going to bend the knee and open the hip. Now my left knee is the highest thing up on my body. So I'm going to try not to be here. Try to get that as far as you can. Push strong into both arms. That's going to keep you long on the right side of the waist. Breathe in. 
And exhale, swing that left foot forward. You can lower the right knee down. You can have it up if you want to, but I'm gonna lower it just so you know where I'm going from here. And then hands up at the very top of the back of your pelvis and the rib cage lifts up and out. Uh, try to soften your jaw to let the chest open up a little bit more. Breathe in, breathe out. Release the hands down, step back, plank pose, knees down if you like. Exhale, lower all the way down to your belly. Inhale, cobra pose. Exhale, soften down, hips up if you like. Back to plank pose, back to downward facing dog. Big breath in. Big breath out. And looking forward, shift your feet up to your hands. Nice, easy forward fold. Back, exhale, really release your ears from your shoulders. Long neck. Roll the shoulders back, halfway up. Big breath in. The heart is the half that lifts. Exhale, fold it down. Inhale, all the way up. And exhale, hands to your heart. We're going to start to build our flow here. So you're going to take your left foot, kind of step it back and now into a lunge. I'm going to come nice and long. You have the back heel lifted. You're going to take your arms up. You're going to reach up all the way back spine. And bring your palms together and bring your hands to the back of your head. Now if your shoulders are tense, bring your hands to the back of your head. Here, so you're holding the back of your head on the side that you can bring. Your thumb to the back of your neck, great. Then lift your heart up towards your elbows. You're really taking yourself up and you're trying to fall back. One more big breath in. Soften your shoulders, exhale. And then you're going to turn over towards the left. Turn all ten toes almost parallel, but out a little bit. And you're going to reach your arms up here to get a little bit longer in that time. Then it's going to be your left leg that bends. Your right leg stays straighter and your hips go back. So you might go back here, or you might have a deeper sannyasa. Now, as we go through this, though, I'm going to do the higher one because you know that you have this available if it feels great in your body. Okay? So, for the most part, I'm going to be coming back. You're going to come back up to the back, and then you're going to turn the toes. Back to the right, plant the hands down, step yourself back to plank pose, and then lower all the way to the belly or down to chaturanga, which is halfway. Inhale, upward dog. Let's all press back. Now we're facing dog. And then there's some additional fancy movement comes in. The first time we're going to go and flip the dog from plank. So come forward, heart above your thumbs. You're going to take your right foot up. And then turn it back behind you until the foot comes on the ground. We're going to come up and open into wild thing. See, the placement just becomes better when you put the limbs where they go. And then you're going to flip it back over. Put the hands down. Take the foot down. Back. Down or down. When we go through this flow, you might take it straight back from wild thing to step the right foot up. And then you're going to stand up on your right leg. Just lift the left foot, doesn't have to be high, and set it down, forward fold. Relax your back. Go ahead and stand all the way up, reach those arms up. And hands come down towards your heart. We're going to come into that um, fall on the other side again. I'm going to face this way, just the first time. And when we close low, I'll see you later. So just take your right foot. I'm going to bring it towards the back of your neck. She's like, you're going to hit my butt too for a long time. You're going to come into this lunge. Lift your inner thighs. Lift your heart up through your thumbs. And then the thumbs come together or the hands make a basket behind your head. And you just rest them towards the back of your head and the back of your neck. Try to relax your inner shoulders. Inhale, lift the heart right up to those elbows. Exhale, soften your shoulders. Inhale, turn open towards the right. So you're going to shift your feet. They're not going to be parallel. They turn out a little bit. Why? Because that's the place you come into a really nice side lunge. Now, make sure you're not going over to that knee because if I'm in the full variation, my hips are all the way down and back, right? From here, same thing. My hips are down and back. A lot of this. Exhale. Inhale. 
Exhale, pivoting into the lunge. Step back, plank pose. You can always skip these and come straight to downward dog or go through chaturanga or to your belly. Open your heart. And then on your exhale, finding downward facing dog. And take your left leg up in the, oh, sorry, you're gonna go from plank. Yeah. You go from plank, take your left leg up, and then you're gonna turn it over so your foot comes to the ground. Keep your hips up, push the floor away. Lift your heart up, expand that front body. And then you're gonna take the hand down. It's okay to bend at the hips a little bit. You can step back to down dog or take that left leg up because you're gonna look forward. Step the left foot up towards your left hand and then stand up on that leg. Lift your heart forward. Exhale, take you into a forward fold. Soften those knees, stand all the way up. Big inhale. Exhale, hands at your heart. Over here. We're gonna take that flow all the way through. And then just another, I think about two more times. How are we doing? Yeah, okay. We're gonna do a couple more times on this side. Before we do extra stretch to the front of this thigh, we're gonna stand up on your right foot, take your left leg back behind you, catch the inside of your foot. You're gonna push that foot back and your heart forward, lifting up and out in a dancer's pose. And this is still only about halfway through a pose. You might not have a lot of space, but if you do, you can lean the heart forward, keep lifting those inner thighs to keep feeling your pelvis even. Thank you, long. Good. And then come up, release that space. Just give you more room to open back there, but don't hinge backwards. You're going out and forward, yeah? Reach back, catch the inside of your right foot, take the heart up and forward, lift those inner thighs, take up as much room with your body as you can, breathing in. Breathing out, and then coming back to your feet down, finding the front space in your neck. All right, we're gonna to start to work this back into a flow. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway up, heart lifts forward. Exhale, step the right, the left foot back, sorry, left foot. Inhale, reach the arms up, high lunge. Exhale, hands come back behind your head. Lift the inner thighs, the heart, the elbows. Exhale, soften the shoulders. Inhale, straighten the legs, turn over towards the left. Exhale, side lunge. Inhale, reach it back up. Exhale, hands down, pivot back to the lunge. Step back, inhale, plank pose. Exhale, downward dog or chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Stay here, big breath in, big breath out. And then take the right leg up, breathe in. Exhale, bend into your knee. Now you can go back to plank or you can come from hips up high. Keep the hips up high, give it back. Find a wild thing. And then bend back to your right foot on the, or right hand on the ground, then right foot on the ground. Stand up on the right leg, little visit to a uh, Supported warrior three, exhale, two, three, down. Inhale all the way up. Exhale, hands at the heart. And then through to the other side. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway up, breathe in, heart forward. For real this time, right leg goes back into a lunge. Inhale, arms lift up. Exhale, hands come back behind your head. Now reach up and forward. Long spine, exhale, soften the shoulders. Inhale, straighten the legs, turn over towards the right. Exhale, bend into the right leg, come back, side lunge. Inhale, come back up, two long legs. Exhale, taking the time to plant the hands, step the foot back, inhale, open your chest. Exhale, down dog or chaturanga, I'll meet you in downward dog. Take breaks when you need. Now on your next inhale, take your left leg up, bend into your knee, keep pushing into both hands, and then you're going to keep turning the left foot over until the left hand becomes so light that it floats up into the air. Keep pushing strong with that right arm. And then the left hand comes down, the left leg lifts up, look forward, left foot comes up to your left hand. Stand up. Up on that left leg for a moment, and then set two feet down, forward fold. Inhale, all the way up, arms up. 
Exhale, hands to the head. One more time through that photo, holding business right at the end of it just because it's here. If you find it hard to have both hands on the ground, standing on one leg, go ahead and grab some blocks and have that handy for you. That will just grab There's a box so underneath the hands, if you need. Find your feet underneath your hips, let the breath out. Inhale, reach both arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Fully up, deep breath in. Left foot goes back, exhale. Inhale, high lunge. Exhale, hands drop back behind your head. Inhale to lift the heart. Exhale to soften the back of the heart. Inhale, two straight legs lift up. Exhale, side lunge, pushing the pinky toe edges of your feet. Inhale, take it back up. Exhale, pivot and shift. Stepping back, inhale, open chest. I'll meet you back in downward dog. Get there however you need. Take another exhale. Inhale, right leg lifts. Bend and open as you exhale. Keep pushing the floor away until eventually the hand, the foot comes down, the hand goes up. And then back into your three-legged dog. Look forward. Swing that right foot up to your hands. And then come to stand up. Maybe you put your hands on blocks. And this is where it can be very beneficial because you're going to take your left heel, try to tuck it in towards your hip. Now try not to open too much. You want to keep that outer right hip lifted, but look underneath your right armpit and go, hey foot, what happens if we try to hold on to each other? Now this is awkward as heck. I will totally give this to you. It's very awkward, but maybe you can lift those inner thighs and send the heart forward and just feel like kind of neat for a little bit and then set two feet down, forward fold. Oh, shake things out. Let the air out. Keep them all the way up. Lifting the arms, exhale, hands to your heart. One more time, one more time through. Inhale, lift the arms, exhale, forward fold. Halfway up, big inhale. Exhale, hands down, right leg back. Lift the arms up. High lunge, exhale, hands back to your head. Inhale, lift the heart up to the elbows. Exhale, soften something. Straight legs, turn to the side, lift up, breathe in. Exhale, Gandasana, side lunge, sit the hips back. Inhale, back up. Exhale, start pivoting, going back towards that lunge, set the hands down. Inhale, plank, exhale, go where you will. Keep expanding through the body. Long, spacious, lots of room for the breath. Exhale. Left leg lifts, breathe in. Back the hips, bend the knee, breathe out. Mindful of your space, set the foot down, lift the heart and the hips up. And then go back to two hands, one leg up. Look forward, step that left foot up to your hands and then bring your hands up onto the blocks of the floor and the leg is lifting you're going to bend the knees. So you can open up a little bit here. Still keep lifting those inner thigh spaces. It's just a little bit more stacked in your hip. And then, oh, where is it? You guys have to find it with my eyeballs or else my hand is just kind of going blind back there. It's like, wait a minute, eyeballs, help me out. Then once you've got hold, you could just work on holding yourself in this very strange knot or Expand yourself in this very strange knot. And then set things down, releasing this very strange knot. Wiggle your head and your neck out. We're gonna come back to standing, lift the arms up. And exhale, hands come down into your heart. Before we move on, just one more standing shape on each side. So set up like you would for warrior one. So you've got your feet a little bit apart in the back, feel them and then straighten this front leg. Take your hands back, you can hold hands or hold on to your hips. I did demonstrate the opposite of that, but you know what I mean. Try to keep the legs straight, lifting that outer right hip as you send your heart forward. Let it be the heart that goes forward. So instead of trying to get really close to your leg, can you really release your heart forward, which might take you up a little bit more, but it's gonna expand your chest space. 
One more exhale. If your arms are gonna stand up, see if you can take one step up. And then step the right foot back. Find the warrior one's facing, so if that's kind of familiar in your practice, it's a good place to come to and then straighten the line. It's not quite as wide as warrior two, but it's not really it's quite as square apart as wider. Yeah, hands back, right hips, lift the chest, send the heart forward. Go over that leg, and as you send the heart forward, lift that outer left hip back. Big inhale, big exhale, release the arms, come back up, try to take one step back up towards the front of your mat, and then bring your feet back in underneath your hips. We're going to start taking a flow back towards downward dog, inhale, lift it up, exhale, fold down, halfway up, breathe in. Plant the hands, step or if you want to hop back on the moon downward dog, whoever you're going to get there. Once you get back there, big breath in. Big breath out. Lift your right leg up. We're going to come forward in a pigeon. Bring your right knee forward, sliding your left leg back. Balance the hips so I'm not sitting here or here. Right in the middle. Lift your heart up. Soften your shoulders. Exhale. And then come forward. Just a couple of breaths. Not a really, really long step. Another hip opener in just a bit. One more exhale. Start to come back up to your hands. But when we go into cow face pose, you might want to grab something and bring it underneath your hips. You're going to take the back knee, you're going to tuck it back, widen your feet, and then sit back. And then I'll just be honest, I, it feels really intense all of the time, but if I put something underneath my hips, I'm kind of not, and I'm not, it feels a little bit better. I'm going to widen this bottom foot out. I think I got a little space there. Knees are stacked. I'm on the pinky toe edge of the feet. And then your work might just be to be here. Try to get your eyebrows out of your hairline, which takes a long time. But maybe it never happens. The eyebrows just stay in the hairline every time you're in cow face pose. But if you're interested in working a little bit further, you want to grab a strap and work the bind you can. I actually recommend maybe just not using the strap and just kind of finding that space and the expansiveness all on your own today. So you're going to take your opposite arm, so whatever your top leg is, your opposite arm goes on top, the other hand goes behind your back. Now I can just place the hands on my back and move the elbows apart and let my ears lift up nice and tall on the spine. And I feel some really good shoulder release here. It's not very intense, but it's not like trying to just jam or catapult myself no shoulder stretch. If you can hold fingers or a strap, you can still pull the elbows apart and try not to like pull limbs apart. Can you expand in those places? Can you open up? Can you clear out without shattering? And exhale. Release any bind that you have, unwind the arms. You're gonna come forward, unwind your legs, and go back. In a downward dog, you can clear it out with a vinyasa push up uh, sequence if you want to. Just press it on back. When you get there, take a big breath in, and a breath out. And then the left leg lifts, giving you space to bring the knee forward and sliding the right leg back. Pigeon pose, knee faces out to the side, fix their balance. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, soften the heart. And then take yourself forward. Pigeon pose. Finding places to soften yourself. One more round of breath. 
And it's ready to come back up. And then you're going to tuck the back knee up. And we're going to come into cow face pose. Let's shift to face you. Take the bottom foot. I can wiggle mine out a little bit if I come into it that way. So just make it be myself up. You can stay here. Just hold on for dear life. So you're just trying to relax the muscles in your face. Or you take the opposite arm up on top and back. Binding or not binding, it doesn't matter. Can you release the elbows? Expand through the heart space. Find softness. Two more breaths. Releasing your arms. We're gonna unwind the legs and align the body coming back to downward dog. If you wanted to work through another um, chaturanga sequence, you could do that. It's kind of nice to balance Fine after those twisted up shapes. Big inhale. Big exhale. Lower your knees. Widen them toes towards each other. Sit back to child's pose. Rest your head. Maybe wiggle your hips a little bit to see what extra space might be available. Right hand over towards the right side of your mat, left hand on top of it. Rest your head, push down into both hands, soften your inner shoulders, and drop your left hip back. And take your left hand to the left edge, your right hand on top of it. Rest your head, press down strongly to both arms. Relax your right hip back. And then come back to center. Now lift yourself back up onto your knees. You might need to pad up your knees here, bring them hip width distance apart, and then come up onto your thighs or your hips are up over your knees. Bring your hands into your back and let your hips move forward and center your heart up, relaxing your shoulders back. Right, you can leave your hands at your hips, going from side to side in half camel pose, or you can work through a little bit of a flow that gets a little bit further. I will let you know there's a little bit of like a circular swoop that can happen in the hips. Give yourself space for that, but try not to do your camel pose here. Try to do it here. Yeah, so you come out of the swoop, and instead of ending there, you go here. Yeah. So you're going to take maybe your right hand down towards your hip or, or towards your heel or leave it at the hip. You're going to send the hips forward, the heart up, big breath in. And then you're going to swoop it down and back, draw that belly and exhale. Inhale, camel halfway on the left. Exhale, swoop it back. So just going side to side, pausing in the moments that feel really delicious to you. And expand greater every time. Always thinking of lifting up out of your hips, not about how far you go back. You can do one more on each side. It's still feeling good to you. And when you are even, when you are finished, you're going to come back. Hips above the knees, heart above the hips. We're gonna go in one more camel pose. So your hands at your back pockets, or hands back at your heels. Notice how my hips go forward. The heart expands up and outwards. Can you open up this space as much as possible? You should kind of feel like you're gonna fall forward under your belly at any point, but don't do that. Yeah. Inhale, draw your belly in. Exhale, and come back up. Untuck your toes, put a block underneath your heels if you need. Try to stack your spine, relax your back, rest your hands down in your lap. Let's take three full deep breaths. Let out 
out that last exhale. And then start to take yourself into your seat. And then swing the legs out in front of you. Move your right feet, foot up, cross it over, or leave it on the right side of the, of the left leg. Lift your left toes, right hand in nice and close. Lift your spine, exhale, soften your belly, and keep pulling the thigh in. Relax your collarbone, open. Big inhale. Big exhale. Start to release the twist. Release your leg and then wrap up for the other side. Left side is in, right toes are lifted. Hug the thigh, hands in close. Lift behind the ears. Exhale, soften the belly into that twist. Every inhale getting taller. Every exhale, softening and twisting deeper. Big breath in. One more breath out. And then these your twist. Unwind your legs. We're gonna come back down to the ground for a little bit. We'll come back up in a moment. You're gonna come down, feet a little bit wider. Then your hips, reach your arms back, maybe hold on to your elbows, flex your feet, drop your knees over towards the right side, then relax your inner shoulders, inner armpits, maybe your right foot goes on your left knee if that feels really delicious. You feel good, not like your knees strain, and keep pulling your elbows away from your head. Big inhale. Big exhale. Unhook the right ankle if it was hooked. Come back to the center of both knees over towards the left side and maybe the left ankle hooks. You flop the knee to the shoulders, feel the outer arm hips reaching the elbows further away. Inhaling. Exhaling. And release the Ankle, come out of the twist, bring the arms down by your side, the heels in close to you and hip width apart. And then wiggle your shoulders under, come up into bridge pose. Or if you wanted to come up into wheel pose, you could have done enough madness space. I won't, I won't cue and teach that now, but let me know if you'd like to see that in the future. Reach the knees forward, inner thighs in, heart floats up, breathe in. And release your arms, your shoulders, lower the hips down, wiggle the feet wider, let the knees knock against each other. Your hands rest down, let your heart beat decelerate. Make the breakdown sets in. Start to take your knees up into your chest. Give yourself a little wiggle side to side. Looks like one more twist each direction. Open your arms, let the knees rest over to one side. Twist yourself up further if you desire it. Wiggle your shoulders a little bit more open to the opposite side if it's available to you. Let the belly soften, let the body soften. The breath intensity starts to drop. One more exhale. And start to roll yourself over to the other side. When you get there, wiggle the shoulders open to the opposite side that your knees are at. Let your collarbone soften, your belly relaxes. Notice points of tension. Give them an opportunity to release.
One more round of breath. Big exhale. Come back to the center. You're gonna take yourself back up because we're gonna step up for that restorative pose I mentioned. So this is where you grab if you have like a big bed pillow. If you have a yoga bolster, like that works, but I, I, I don't have one. So if you do, maybe you don't. You can use two tiny um, couch cushions or big couch cushions or um, stacks of thick books. If you have yoga blocks, great. Little towel rolled up. A lot of options here. You just sit with your hips up against the short end of your pillow, and then you're gonna open your knees up, feet together. You're gonna use the blocks to support the sides of your legs, so you're not getting too much tension here. Now, some of us feel really good opening up, getting a huge stretch. Try to avoid having a huge stretch. The restorative spaces are to help find balance and to find softness into the spaces that might be a little easier for us to get to. So maybe you are pretty open, uh, blocks at the knees, maybe you need the blocks more up by the head of your femurs. Take a moment to adjust until you feel like this isn't crazy. And if you need to put something behind your head, like my, my body's really long, so I kind of come off the end of the pillow. If that's not comfy for you, I'm going to put something else behind your head so you don't have to like go like totally strip your bed. Sorry. <laughs> Grab what you need to. Set yourself up for softness. Go ahead and settle in here. You need to adjust your legs so that instead of the knees being open, the feet are wide and the knees are together. That can be a really good compromise to still allow you to have this lifted and supported expansive heart space. So you always get to choose. You always get to adjust these things. To listen to what your body tells you it needs. Practice is not about trying to contort and punish ourselves. The practice is about learning to understand and listen to ourselves. To dig deeper. feels great and you want to stay here, go for it. This can be your Shavasana. If you need to start to take the blocks out, roll over, push the pillow aside, do it slowly and softly. Don't rouse and rile yourself up. Come to a place where you feel good about resting for just another few minutes still.
start to come back to your breath. Take the time to build up some expansive breath here. It doesn't have to be heavy and deep. Can you lengthen the breath, allowing more time for the breath to come in? To softly let it go. Feeling that expansive work right in there around the heart space. Letting it be clear and open. And if your knees are still open, use your fingertips to close them towards each other. If you've got the blocks or books, what have you, around you, set them to the side and then roll over, catch yourself off of your pillow. Give yourself a moment of gratitude for taking this time for yourself, for the challenge, for the breath. And coming up into your own version of your comfy seat. Sit however it makes sense to you and bring your hands to your heart. We'll seal our practice with OM. Deep breath in. Uh, Going down to the love inside of our expansive hearts, the light and the darkness within each of us. Namaste, friends. Thank you all so much for being here. And I've got links um, up in the chat and then in the YouTube comments and such if you're able, to, if you are inclined uh, to toss anything in. I do keep these classes going by donation. Uh, doesn't have to be every time. Share the stuff. That's also wonderful. Uh, little bits make a big difference over time. And just let me be able to keep, you know, to keep the systems up that all of this runs on. I appreciate the Jesus out of you. Have a Freaking awesome day. Okay. Bye.